Cannabis connection in the house. 420 boys. You know we got a new president, right? Yeah, yeah, I heard. <laughs> I stopped uh, paying attention after like the first three days. And then uh, I found out like four hours after the nation did, apparently, um, yesterday that we had finally picked one. Were you one of those geeks who uh, voted? Uh, no. I, I I tapped out. Uh, who's the last? Uh, the last president I voted for was uh, Bush the second time. Oh, okay. Bush versus Kerry. Yeah. Yeah. I voted one time Bush versus Gore. I voted for Gore. Yeah, I voted for Gore too. You know what I'm saying? Nigga won the popular vote, lost the electoral college. I said, yeah, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Then joined the military. (laughs) 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 But yeah, we know saying Joe Biden, old senile ass is not a president of shit with the bitch uh, vice president of shit. You know what I'm saying? You know how black people is. You know what I'm saying? This is the first black female vice president. I'm like, oh, I hate y'all niggas, man. They do that shit with everything. And she like Korean and... I don't give a fuck, man. Kamala. Yeah, Kamala Harris. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, shout out to, you know, some my nigga Kamala, rest in peace. Yeah. <laughs> the real Kamala. Yeah, my nigga One Foot Joe. You know what I'm saying? But uh poor guy. Yeah, but you know, I, I my my everyday life ain't gonna change. Damn it, I was trying to Yeah, that King Palm. Yeah, that shit uh cherries pop off that bitch like, you know what I'm saying, goddamn uh cherry trees. <laughs> but yeah, my my life ain't gonna change. You know what I'm saying? Like, the last four years of my life ain't really changed. I mean, got a job, lost a job, got a job, lost a job. Pandemic came through. You know what I'm saying? Ain't really shit popping. <laughs> for some reason, Trump gets credit for niggas' 401ks going up during his term. That's crazy, because my 401k just went down last week. You know what I'm saying? Oh, damn. Yeah, so, you know what I'm saying? Shit on that nigga for that shit? Yeah. <laughs> You're fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga ain't conceded defeat yet, has he? Nope. Uh, no, he's not going to. Oh, yeah, I didn't it's think about he was. To be you know what 30. Mad funny. I'm up on Northfield the other day. Um, about to turn out, um, going towards Southgate and shit. And uh, this nigga in a van, he's like, hey! You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know... I'm like, who is this nigga that know me? Because I don't know this nigga, you know what I'm saying? So I swing back around, pull back up in the drive, uh, in the parking lot and shit. Nigga got the whip. I got the whip. I'm like, what's good, man? He like, what's up, Ed? I'm like, my name ain't Ed, fam. He's like, your name ain't Ed? You ain't got a brother? You know what I'm saying? I said, nah, man. He's like, oh, my man. My bad, man. <laughs> I was like, man, I just got one of them faces. Yeah. You know what I'm you know, the scourge, you know what I'm saying, has one of those faces that, you know, that is very instantly recognizable, except to the 394 Legion of Street Sparks. It's also very punchable, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I've been in my fair share of fights. Yeah. Um, so, oh, nigga don't know me. You know what I'm saying? He's like, oh, my bad, my bad. And then he bounces. And before he bounces, he say, as long as Biden win. <laughs> I'm what like, the fuck that got to do with it? I'm like, <sighs> right on, man. <laughs> Just get my whip and take off. <laughs> oh, my bad for mistaking you for some nigga named Ed that I apparently don't know that well. But, hey, it's long Biden win. All right. We black. <laughs> but even though, but full disclosure, even though I didn't vote and I won't be voting again as... As far as I can tell, um, I, w- I am happy to see that Trump is gone and shit because, you know, I, I don't know, like, you know, said, like, I don't know if, you know, I'm about to go down a whole ass rabbit hole. But I, long story short, I don't know if anybody can be that bad or do that bad of a job as he did on purpose and shit. I never saw any change. <laughs> I'm telling you, fam. Like, they got uh, elected in uh, 2016, so they came through in 2017. I was still in school. Graduated college. Got a job, lost a job. Got another job, lost another job. Pandemic came through. I got another fucking job. And that's where I'm at. I mean, I had, you know what I'm saying, my little, little foods, you know what I'm saying, baby foods in the house, you know what I'm saying, and I got a new motherfucking house. So, honestly, shit been... 
good with me with this nigga under the administration. I have, you know, progressed farther career and profession, uh, professionally as well as personally as more than Obama. You know what I'm saying? To be fair, me too. Obama, I was still fucking bitches up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I was still pulling bitches off the club when Obama was in, was in term and shit. Oh, shit, I was still married with him. <laughs> <laughs> It was a Bush. You know what I'm saying? Bush, I was out here, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you know, be, you know uh, aiming high for the Air Force and shit. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. So, and Clinton... I was a teenager, so, you know. <laughs> Me too. It is what it is. <laughs> this is the Extreme Retro Review for ECW. January 16th, 1997. For Extreme Retro Review number 246. If you have the coveted, illustrious, and highly elusive tape trader version of this show you will know that the time for this edition of hardcore television was 56 minutes and 39 seconds to the guy to the right of me sextuple p will now give you his thoughts and views as well as as well as the time from the WWE Network that he just recently resubscribed to. Because <laughs> we back. <laughs> so it, just uh, just a quick aside. I, like, I was it, uh, interested and curious as to how uh, you would describe the tape trader, especially knowing that, you know what I'm saying, um, you haven't been as enthused as uh, recordings past uh, with with doing this particular show and yet somehow with the same fervor fervor the same zeal the same exuberance and the same childlike excitement you were still able to sit up here and um uh, uh, see try to uh prop up the the this grandiose idea of these tape traders like they're just something magnificent and uh, a wonderment to behold and shit. So, in honor of the fact that I don't feel like you phoned that in and shit, I'm not going to tell uh, the 394 out there uh, of the Legion, you know, said uh, Hollywood loves y'all, by the way. Uh, no homo if you're a guy. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to uh, uh, mention how much of a turd that the tape trader really is and shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to celebrate the fact that you could still uh, be excited about that after all that. Now, with that being said, I'm back on the WWE Network, and I'm probably not going to die of Alzheimer's because I didn't have to watch the tape trader show, and I could watch this on the WWE Network. The time for the January 14th, 1997 show was 44 minutes and 24 seconds, and I hadn't watched ECW in a while and shit, so I had kind of forgot where we had all left off and shit. And it's crazy. Once I, I watched this show and shit, I, I like everything started flooding back and shit. And I thought the show was pretty enjoyable. The first match with I, I had a couple questions and shit, um, but uh, overall I thought it was a pretty good show. So we start off with Wildfire Tommy Rich <laughs> and Ricky Morton debuting in the ECW arena, and in about sixty seconds they're gonna be taken. To the extreme. <laughs> Hell, just like Tommy Rich's pants. <laughs> <laughs> so we come back with the gangsters versus Tommy Rich and Ricky Morton. Extended squidosh, brawl around ringside, into the crowd. There's a brief heel comeback, diving chair onto Rich for the win. I gave it one star. H.W. Take. My first question is, how much does Ricky Morton and fat-ass Tommy Rich get paid to job out uh, to the gangsters in ECW in 1997? The number can be ascribed to the amount of grams of cocaine that Paul <laughs> Heyman gave to them. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Cause I, I, cause I was, and then when they ended up beating each other up and shit, I, I I'm like, like, how, 
how do they? How do you convince these two to come in? Because you know, I think of you, you know the wrestling, like somebody like them and shit uh, against the gang. So I figure at least it's something would be a um, no contest or something at best and shit. But not only do they lose, then they end up getting into it with each other. Okay, so. 1997, Wildfire Tommy Rich is on complete downswing of his career. Uh, Ricky Morton had just did a stint in Smoky Mountain Wrestling um, that kind of set the world on fire on the independent scene. But by 1997, uh, he had already did another WCW run. Um, He was in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, like I'd already uh, explained. And now, I mean, he was, you know, he's been on... You know, he's been on the scene for five more years past his prime. So, and, you know, he got, he, Paul got them in for a song and a dance. Did you see the mullets? I saw the mullets and I saw uh, Tommy Rich looking like a, a busted can of biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, <laughs> I, I don't know why that I just, that, that. Oh, I, I was al- almost fixated on it and shit. And it, I, I know it sounds weird and shit, but like, it just, this motherfucker was just, exploding just you know fat everywhere and shit and it was i, I don't know it was just odd but they whore themselves out we have a bumper for january 17th 1997 and on the hardcore hotline this week there's a major scandal with extramarital affairs leading to a bar fight with wcw personnel oh shit the hotline will spill the tea for one ninety nine a minute. Uh, you motherfuckers, they, they imagine they're going to take their time. Fuck that shit. Yeah. <laughs> we got Joey back at the nest shilling the Scranton, Pennsylvania debut at the CYC Center. And Raven puts his hair on the line in a match against the Sandman. If Sandman wins, he gets the title and Raven's hair. And if Raven wins, he regains possession of his world heavyweight title. Also, the second appearance of the masked man who wants to fuck with the franchise. <laughs> January 18th, 1997. Moving on. We have a spot for Extreme Warfare Volume 2. <laughs> oh, yeah. Recounted by us in Extreme Retro Review number 243. You're welcome. Back with Joey at the Nest detailing the fallout of the earlier tag match between Tommy Rich and Ricky Morton. They get into a quick scuffle, and it leads into an impromptu Southern-style brawl. Tommy Rich won that brawl, and more from Wildfire Tommy Rich later. We go on to Taz, and the question is, is he injured from the match against Rob Van Dam at Holiday Hell 1996, recounted by us in Extreme Retro Review number 236? You're welcome. So cameras go off and venture towards the Team Taz Dojo. Via satellite, quote unquote. <laughs> the cameraman knocks on the door. The lead assistant and uh, trainer guy, Mako, answers <laughs> and shoes him away, but then changes his mind and lets him in. From ECW Home Video, we have a spot for the November to Remember 1996, recounted by us in Extreme Retro Review number 231. You're welcome. Back with Taz at the Team Taz Dojo. Joey's doing the back and forth, (laughs) quote unquote. Joey asked, why haven't you competed since 1996 Holiday Hell? Taz answers, if Sabu can set out for a month and still be the glory boy, then he can do the same thing too. You're damn right. Joey then asks, is your shoulder really injured? Asking all these goddamn questions. Taz replies, yes. But it's been injured for a number of years. He injured it before he was in ECW in a judo tournament. Joey then goes on to ask, Then why do you hate Rob Van Dam? Taz answers, Because he's a pretty boy, Johnny come lately, (laughs) trying to make a name in the house that Taz built. Joey finally asks, When will you fight again? Taz finally concludes the segment by answering next week 
and he kicks the cameraman out. <laughs> HW, your thoughts yeah. and take on the whole segment. I thought it was cheesy and awesome all at the same time and shit. Once Taz got the talk of this shit, then, you know, it, it started to get good. Well done. Oh, and it's very impressive to see that Taz has his own dojo as well. We have a spot from ECW Home Video for Hardcore Heaven 1996. Finally re-recounted by us in Extreme <laughs> Retro Review number 203. You're re-welcome. We have a bumper for January 18th, 1997 in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And we have Joey with the hard sale for that show. Moving on. ECW Home Video Spot for Extreme Warfare Volume 1. Recounted by us, finally, in Extreme Retro Review number 242. And you're finally welcome. Back with Joey Edinus recapping Sandman and Raven with the BWO mention. He says that questions remain, but they will be addressed. Stay tuned. We have an old-fashioned slug out for possession of the ECW World Heavyweight title between Raven and the Sandman. Raven talks shit. They trade haymakers. They're flooring each other with each shot. There's no ref. There's no decision. So whoever stands walks away with the belt. I hear BWO chants, but ironically, I see no one yelling BWO. <laughs> they brawl around ringside. There's a table suplex. Raven clotheslines Sandman over the top through a table. Ew. <laughs> Raven grabs the belt and DDT Sandman. Then the BWO make their appearance. Yeah. Crowd pops. Sandman comes back and mists Raven in the face with beer. Nova and Meanie get their ass kicked by Raven. Because Raven's blinded. Stevie and Raven face off. Stevie shoves Raven into a schoolboy by Sandman. Raven and Stevie face off again. There's a Stevie kick into Sandman. LOL. Stevie and Raven face off a third time. <laughs> Raven tags Stevie but gets DDT'd by Sandman. Sandman and Stevie now face off. Stevie, Stevie kick on Raven and hands hack his, ble um, his BWO shirt and leaves. Right, right. Hack, you know, he's posing out to the crowd with the BWO shit. <laughs> the crowd is chanting BWO, but ironically, I see no one yelling. <laughs> Sandman then chokes Raven with the BWO shirt. He gets Raven punch drunk into the ropes. He does the Andre the Giant spot. <laughs> yeah. Sandman then proceeds to cane Raven and leaves with the belt again. <laughs> Raven collapses. He gets tended. By the Goofacus 3, <laughs> he stumbles out, does the crawl sail all the way up the aisle, yeah. <laughs> and I must note that he refused all help during this whole post post slug out segment, HW Take. Oh, man, I thought this shit was glorious. Uh, it was probably uh, one of the most entertaining non-matches that I've ever mm -hmm. seen. And I don't know if Raven um, uh, scripted this shit or whatever or planned it or whatever. But whoever did, uh, I applaud you and um, well done. We have a January 18th, 1997 hard sale narrated by Paul Heyman. Moving on. We have a T-shirt A-Rama shield featuring the BWO, a Taz T-shirt a Sandman t-shirt, a catalog shield, a House of Hardcore shield, and another Hardcore Hotline shield for $1.99 per minute. Fuck that shit and move on. <laughs> we go back to a replay of what just happened with Raven and the BWO, and it goes back to Joey. He asks if Sandman has joined the Blue World Order. Ridiculous. <laughs> Joey then details the Raven and Stevie pairing, and for two years... Stevie has been Raven's number one flunky. Yes. <laughs> they go over the shot by Raven and Stevie putting his dukes up. Joey asked who the kick was for, Raven or Sandman. Ridiculous. <laughs> 
And I must note that this ate up a lot of TV time. It, HW it thoughts. Did. They milked the shit out of this shit. Luckily for them, I, I enjoyed it the first go round because I got plenty of helmets, and it's burned in my brain now and shit. So, um, but yeah, and I, I like they, how they kind of left it ambiguous as to you know say if was Stevie really turning on Raven and shit, or was he just you know saying just sick of Raven shit. For a hot second, or is he really going on his own now? Because he got his own click, his take off, his own popularity and shit. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm all in so far. We got Joe Gertner hosting Hype Central this week on Hardcore Television. <laughs> yeah, he recites a poem, <laughs> and after all these billboards, we'll interview the person in ECW with the most luscious lips piercing eyes, and best chest. He gave it away right there. <laughs> we got a January 17th, 1997 bumper. A BWO, Taz, Sandman, and ECW t-shirt spots. The ECW t-shirt this time is saying that the Surgeon General advises that ECW may be hazardous to your health. We have a January 18th bumper, and still coming soon, Pitbull t-shirts. Why? Oh, man, I just need uh, an excerpt of the Surgeon General saying that ECW was bad for for your health. Because I know uh, with the WWE Network not being out back then, he had to be talking about the Tape Trader show. Had to be. We continue on with a catalog shield. A Sports Channel Philadelphia time slot change is now going to Thursdays at 11 p.m., a record, label sh- a record label shout out, and it's all set to Swallowed by Bush. We come back to Gertner, who is interviewing himself. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. <laughs> back with Joey at the Nest, recapping the world title situation, and Raven comes through and yokes Joey up. He wants his belt back. Todd Gordon then comes through, and he gets yoked up by Raven as well. Todd tells him to go get his title if he wants it. Raven agrees and pushes Todd out of the shot. H.W. take. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's hilarious, but I don't know what he think uh, what fucking Todd Gordon going to do uh, to get him his belt back and shit. Uh, but this shit is entertaining and shit as Raven is uh, trying to do his best to get his belt back and shit. We continue on with the Raven t-shirt spot moving on. From ECW Home Video, we have another spot for November to Remember 1996, recounted by us in Extreme Retro Review number 231. You're welcome. We have a January 18th, 1997 bumper, and it's going to be at Scranton, Pennsylvania, narrated by Paul Lee for the hard sale. Back with Joey at the Nest with a Shane Douglas recap. (laughs) After going anti-monitor on the pit bulls, he finally needs some backup. Anthony wants revenge for Gary. And Putz is his longtime nemesis dating back to Extreme Retro Review number 41. Whoa, Nelly, you're welcome. Just recently, Shane won at Holiday Hell 1996 with the belly to belly to Beulah for the win. <laughs> with the double uh, double leg uh, gr- uh, uh, grapevine and shit. <laughs> LOL. Yeah. And has since broken her undefeated streak. <laughs> At Holiday Hell 1996, recounted by us in Extreme Retro Review number 236. You're welcome. Cuck, Franchise, and the Undead Bulldozer Brian Lee teamed up to three versus one, Louie the Loser. Louie got some payback recently at a spot show in Allentown, Pennsylvania, where he dressed up as the ref at the show on January 11. Cuck and Louie had their one versus one matchup. So the question remains, has the triple threat Reformed, H dub. <laughs> so it was at that point where, because I I saw where it was going, and clearly it had to be obvious the triple threat was reforming. And plus, you already told me. Spoiler alert. Um. So I understand why Shane picked the original American Badass and shit. But what on earth does Cuck Candido bring to the team and shit? Like, unless it was just Sonny, 
So everybody get a turn on Tony on Sonny so he's in the uh in the squad and shit. Otherwise, like he could have literally picked anybody else except for maybe Mikey Whipwreck. But anybody else. Stay tuned and you'll see the glory of Cut Candido in the triple threat. Oh, I certainly hope so. So we go to a match just in progress to the finish with Louis versus Cuck. Both men are down and Finna Goof is counting them up. They're back up going, they're back up doing the back and forth. There's a Death Valley driver tease, but he gets thrown outside. Cuck is hurt, so Finna Goof stops the count. <laughs> Cuck gets back in, suckers Louis for a two count. A little more stuff. Cuck counters the top rope sun split, sunset flip for the win. Dud. Louis is done as a character <laughs> in ETW. <laughs> this nigga lost that holiday hell. Uh-oh. This nigga lost all the way back at uh, Doctor is In or Natural Born Killers. This nigga uh, got the little come up. It's on Two Cold Scorpio at uh, November to Remember 1996. But Two Cold Scorpio was on his way out the door anyway <laughs> after he beat three motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> they reformed the Triple Threat with 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 Cuck at Holiday Hell. I mean with uh with Cuck and Lee beating up Louie at Holiday Hell. This nigga's lost on fam cam shows. <laughs> I'm through with Louis Spicola. <laughs> he has such promise, too. Poor Louis. Cut Candido takes up all his uh, wrist tape and his knee pads and shit and starts throwing them at Louis. <laughs> starts pie facing this nigga because he lost. <laughs> Louis's mad, so they start fighting again. <laughs> Louis's getting the upper hand. Undead Bulldozer comes through. Three versus one. Shane comes through again. Primetime slam on Louie. Yeah. They do a stuff pile driver on Louie. Take that, Louie. Anthony for the save. Oh, he man. gets primetime slam, but he no-sells it and cleans house. Heals powder. Anthony then tends to Louie the loser as we close the show. H.W., thoughts of the match? Oh, man. The, the highlight of the match was the post-match. Because outside any match that starts in progress, I don't give a fuck about. So... But uh, once uh, the American Badass came out and, and Shane and they started attacking Louie and shit, I was all up into it and shit. Then I got pissed off with fucking Anthony. Uh, the uh, uh, fucking scene stealer wannabe that he tries to be this fucking prima donna always has to stick his nose where it don't belong and shit. Him and fucking Louis Spicoli ain't friends and shit. You ain't never seen them. Uh, you ain't never see Louis, and I could be wrong on this and shit, because I'm super high right now. But I don't recall any time where Louis Spicoli ever came out to save Anthony and shit. Because what the fuck he saving this nigga for? But I digress. Uh, clearly, I didn't like the part where Anthony um, attacked the triple threat, but... The triple threat wasn't running, though. They just, you know what I'm saying? They say, you know what? Our work here is done. We're going to get on up out of here. It's just for clarification and shit. You know what I'm saying? Overall, crowd sweetening aside, <laughs> the sudden, I mean, it was an okay show, but the sudden badass tweet to Raven's character is very jarring from him being this, uh, you know, uh, cult figure, chicken shit heel in the match deal to now the second title reign, you know, saying Sandman has his belt, but he's a badass and he's, you know, he's duking it out in barbed wire matches and he's having slug outs and shit with the Sandman. Like he should be more cerebral with his approach. So this badass tweak is, yeah, I'm not feeling that. The Stevie stuff makes absolutely no sense. The BWO hack tease was completely ridiculous. But this show... I treat it as an info dump, an uh, info dump, because it's catching you up to speed from the end of 1996 and to where we are at right now in ECW in 1997. But the tweaking of the bookend makes it an interesting show, just from the standpoint of okay, they got some holes to patch up, and this is how they're patching them up. I said that this show feels like a new year, but you know you're writing on something, and you're still writing the old year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you you know you know you you, you write you know one sixteen ninety six. You go oh shit, <laughs> it's actually nineteen ninety seven. Yeah. So it's still you know a nineteen ninety six show, retweaked and retooled for nineteen ninety seven purposes. But I liked it. I don't know. I guess. Yeah, you liked it. 
Perfect show to come back to because we back. Coming up next, we continue on with the January 23rd, 1997 show. We out. Peace. Peace.